Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajana here, and today's talk is going to be on is it all in your head or your gut? So, an interesting um, study ran by my desk just recently from the Journal of uh, Brain Behavior and Immunology. And what they're finding is the gut really affects the immune system. And when the immune system is revved up, it's usually revved up because of inflammation. So, we have things like inflammatory cytokines. These are things like IL 6, the various interleukins, interleukin 3. There's a whole bunch of interleukins, right? We have the Th1 and the Th2 side of the immune system, and these various compounds can affect either side, right? We have TNF-alpha, we have nuclear factor kappa beta, but all of these interleukins can shift and affect either Th1 or Th2 immune response, up or down. So this study right here is actually looking at giving or injecting in endotoxin, which is a bacteria particle. It's Basically, bacteria or gram-negative bacteria have two cell walls. So, really quick here, cell wall one, cell wall two, and the outside cell wall here, we have these little particles that come off like sunbeams, and these are known as lipopolysaccharide, LPS for short, or endotoxin. And again, just like the name says, it is hepatotoxic, so not really a good thing for your body. But in this study, they injected a certain amount of endotoxin in, and what they found was over a six-hour period, they found a spike in interleukin-6, a spike in TNF-alpha. But the real interesting component that came out, when they looked at connecting depression and social connection, they gave questionnaires before and questionnaires after, and what they found was a significant increase in depression, and they also found a significant increase in social disconnection. So they gave them questionnaires before, during, and after, and they found it resolved afterwards. But the connection that I'm trying to make here is I see so many patients with gut issues. And a lot of the symptoms I see on their metabolic assessment show anxiety, show depression, show um, emotional symptoms. And again, a lot of these emotional symptoms, they may be connected to the gut. And I totally get the fact that this study may not connect well with the real world because we are injecting endotoxin in. But I thought it was a good study to interject on the fact that, hey, well, we got lots of bad bacteria in our gut from poor drinking water, poor lifestyle habits, excessive sugar, over rampant antibiotic use, weakened immune system, which then cause infections, which then shift bacteria. So we have all of this um, milieu that's been shifted and is dysbiotic, and we have higher amounts of bad stuff, right? We have higher amounts of bad and much lower amounts of good. So we have this skew here called dysbiosis or dysbiotic bacteria. Some of it's diet and lifestyle induced, some of it's infection induced because of the compromised immunity. And again, most of the common solutions that are provided by today's doctors are what? Right? They're antidepressants, they're anti, whether they're uh, benzodiazepines for anxiety, whether it's stimulants, um, again, there's a whole bunch of different medications that aren't even touching the underlying cause, which, in my clinical opinion, could potentially stem from the gut. Now, there is a strong gut-brain connection. We have a nervous system in our gut known as the enteric nervous system. And there's actually just as many nerve cells in our gut as there are in our whole spinal cord, which is pretty staggering. So we have our enteric nervous system. This is in our gut right here. So this is our gut. And then we have our brain over here. So if we have stress in our gut, that can, that can actually cause a sympathetic nervous system response. So the sympathetic nervous system is known as the fight or flight nervous system. So we have sympathetic nervous system over here. And when this gets activated due to stress, dysbiotic bacteria, low stomach acid, malnutrition, inflammation, right? In this study, it was the IL-6 that increased, and it was also the TNF-alpha. That also increased. And again, that could provide stress on the gut. That would increase the sympathetic nervous system, and we have what's called the gut-brain access, which that can cause inflammation in the brain because when we have a leaky gut, we also have a leaky brain. So the same particles over here that are in the gut and affecting the enteric nervous system can also affect the brain. And again, we have fire in the, fire in the gut equals fire in the brain. 
and that can create inflammation, obviously, and then inflammation is going to create brain fog. So if we have brain fog and we have gut issues, well, we have to get to the root cause and an antidepressant, um, a benzodiazepine, that's not going to fix the underlying issue. Now I'm going to connect it here more real world because one, not everyone may resonate with the gut issue. A lot of people have them, but a lot of the symptoms are extra intestinal. So if you don't have diarrhea, bloating, or gas, or any or constipation, you may not think you have a gut issue, but you still may have one. But a lot of people out there have blood sugar issues. And if you go into PubMed or you go into Google Scholar and you punch in IL-6 and hypoglycemia or IL-6 and hyperglycemia, these are low and high blood sugar swings, you're going to see increase in IL-6 when your blood sugar goes up or down. So at these high or low intervals, we're going to be spitting out IL-6, which is an inflammatory compound. What's that going to be doing? Potentially causing more leaky gut, activating this whole gut-brain access by stimulating the fight-or-flight nervous system. IL-6 will then affect the brain and can potentially create more brain fog or mood issues. So just connecting something more real world, most people can connect with blood sugar issues. Most people can maybe go back to a time where they had hypoglycemia and they felt really jittery or shaky. Well again, the literature shows an increase in IL-6 will happen when we have that hypoglycemia spell. And this study shows IL-6 increased and we saw an increase in depression with the study. And we also saw an increase in social disconnectedness. And there are so many drugs out in the market for that. And I just want to look at other mechanisms that could potentially be at play that could be driving these issues. Again, there are a lot of natural solutions out there. Check out some of my information and some of my video series. Check below. And also, if you want to get consulted on this and see if maybe this is a mechanism that's causing your uh, mental emotional issues, feel free and reach out below. Again, this subscribe to the video series. There's going to be more videos coming your way on my YouTube channel. And again, I look forward to seeing you next time.